All right, Sean Wong, Sean Wong, Sean Wong. Call him like you You how about Shimmy Yao Shai? By Shin Rakakadash. Double Lance to the Elves and the Apostles, a great millstone who were well. Peace, blessings, and salutations go to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad. To you, brothers out there pushing the truth with our righteousness and sincerity, and to the Aqua, the free sisters that are listening and learning, to you, I say Sean Wong. Coming back at you with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shemiel Shah, no wounds to edify and defeat the lambs in Yahweh Shemiel Shah through the spirit of Rakak and Dasha praise. Let's be able to find the straight to the point. And we're going to jump right into it. All right, this article that I stumbled upon, you know, I'm looking for some articles, you know, going looking at some news, all right, and I stumbled upon this article, man, which is, <laughs> hey, if this happens, man, hey, get ready for your grocery stores to be empty, okay? All right, this is from the hill.com. And it says, how a railroad strike could send food prices soaring. All right, so let's read a little bit of this article. It says, the nation's supply of food could be could take a hit if railroad workers go on strike, driving up prices at the grocery store and limiting U.S. grain exports to countries facing famine. Verse, yeah, let's say, let's say, oh. As soon as next week, 115,000 freight freight rail workers could walk out if they cannot reach a new contract with railroads, potentially sh shutting down the National Railroad Network that transports 20% of all grain shipments. All right, so hey, get ready for your food prices to soar, man. Okay? Let's see if it'll be more. It says, while unions say they want to avert a strike and Congress has the power to block it, the U.S. food sector is rattled by the prospect of a national railroad shutdown in the middle of peak harvest season. <laughs> so a lot of these foods are not going to get to your grocery store, man. Okay, let's read on. It says, a devastating ripple effect. Hey, he... Even a short-lived interruption will create a devastating ripple effect on the nation's fragile, not, yeah, fragile supply chain, says Lee Sanders, Senior Vice President of Government Relations and Public Affairs at the, at the American Baker Association. Rail-dependent faculties will be unable to receive materials and ingredients in many and millions of Americans a day will be unable to receive the baking, the baked goods they rely on to feed themselves, their families, and communities, he said. Hmm. So shit's about to get crazy, man. A railroad shutdown in mid-September will quickly overwhelm grain shortages of faculties, leaving farmers with few options to stores, store their their crops and boosting the chances of spoilage many grain uh, prospectors will shut down raising the price of bread and other com common items while farmers will be sadly with huge crop quantities and lower commodity prices it's over with man <laughs> it's kind of a double whammy when you hit both the beginning and the end of the supply chain, says Max Fisher, Chief Economic at the National Grain and Feed Association. Freight railroads also carry roughly half of fertilizer and farmers can't afford delay. According to a Wednesday letter to con congressional leader from, from the Fertilizer Institute. All right, so... Expect everything to go up. All right. Let's read on. If farmers do not receive fertilizer, it results in low, lower crop yield, higher food prices, and more inflation for consumers, which is going to lead to hyperinflation. Corey Rosenbutch, the group's CEO, told lawmakers, soaring food causes which agricultural groups Blame particularly, particularly on existing railroad disruptions have hit Americans' families particularly hard. Grocery prices rose 
0.1% over the last year, ending in July, the largest annual increase in more than four decades, according to Labor Depart Department data. Hmm. There typically isn't a backup plan for crops that are transported by rail, rail, particularly when the trucking industry is already struggling to keep pace with demands. The same goes for coal, crude oil, steel, lumber, car parts, and other items frequently loaded onto freight trains. <laughs> so, man... It's about to get crazy out here. Let's read on. A nationwide railroad works stoppage would cost the U.S. economy more than $2 billion per day. God damn. And cost shipping containers to stack up at ports according to estimates from the Associates Association of American Railroads. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's over with, man. Okay? It says, Grain exports and global foods security. Because roughly one-third of U.S. grain exports travel by rail, a work stoppage will also cut down on America's ability to ship food to foreign nations, particularly those in East Africa and the Middle East that faces a risk of famine following Russia's invasion of Ukraine. A coalition of food and, and agricultural groups, including the American Farm Bureau Federation, urges lawmakers on Thursday to block a freight rail strike, warning that it will have devastating consequences for global food security. Exactly. Because, hey, this is going to cause a food shortage. Okay. All right. So I'm not going to read. Uh, let's see. Hold on. Let's see, let's really see. Mm. Yeah, I'm not going to read the rest of this, man. I'll put the rest in the description box. You can read this for yourself. All right, but hey, you see what's coming, man. Okay, so let's get some scriptures, man. Because, hey, these are the times we in. Okay, all right. Shit is about to get crazy out here, man. Okay, let's start here. This is Second Israel chapter uh, six, six in verse 22. And suddenly shall the song places appear on song. The full store houses shall suddenly be found empty. The grocery store is about to be found empty, man. All right. These commodities, all right, they don't just travel by truck. All right. You see the trucking industry is taking a hit. All right. If this happened, hey, then the train industry is about to take a hit, man. If these uh workers go on strike, man, and that's 115,000. Workers that are planning to go on strike if a, uh, an agreement isn't reached. All right. So, what do you think that's gonna do? Hey, everything is about to soar, man. All right. Prices is about to go up. You're about to find some of your items that you people depend on every day are not gonna be found in these grocery stores real soon, man. Okay. So hey, shit is about to get crazy out here, man. Okay. All right. Let's go here. All right. This is Mark 13 and verse 8. For a nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be earthquakes in diverse places, and there shall be famines and troubles. All right, we're in the time of Jacob's trouble, man. All right, Jacob's trouble. Jeremiah 30 and 7 and Daniel 12 and 1. Okay, these are the beginning of sorrows, and we're in the beginning of sorrows, man. Okay, all right, the evil days. All right. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Okay. All right. Uh, let's go here. This is Second Israel chapter 16 and verse 18. The beginning of sorrows and great mournings. The beginning of famine and great death. The beginning of wars. And the power shall stand in fear. The beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils shall come? Behold, famine and plague, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment. All of these are being sent to correct you Israelites, man. You so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, okay? Verse 20, but for all these things, they shall not turn from their wickedness, nor be always mindful of the scourges. Verse 21, behold, victuals shall be so good cheap upon earth that they shall think themselves to be in good case. A lot of you people, you think yourself in good case, man, okay? 
and not realizing that the evils are being multiplied behind the scenes. All this is being orchestrated, man. Okay. All right. Verse 21, behold, victuals shall be so good cheap upon earth that they shall think themselves to be in good case. And even then shall evils grow upon the earth, sore, famine, and great confusion. Okay. All right. Verse 22, for many of them that dwell upon earth shall perish of famine and the others that escape the hunger shall the sword destroy. Okay. So a lot of people are about to starve and die of famine. Okay. All right. Let's read on. All right, let's see what else. Let's go here. All right. Um, actually, actually, I'm gonna start at verse twelve, man. The one is down here in verse sixteen and seventeen, but I'm gonna start at verse twelve. This is Ezekiel chapter five and verse twelve. A third part of these shall die with the pestilence, and with famine shall they be consumed in the midst of thee, and a third part shall fall by the sword round about thee and i will scatter a third part into all the winds and i will draw out a sword after them all right this happened all right this happened in old time this is coming again for two-thirds of you israelites man okay two-thirds of you israelites are about to catch hell all right hey because you refuse to repent and like it says in zechariah chapter 13 verse 8 two parts their ends should be cut off and die okay Let's skip down to verse 15. So it shall be a reproach and a taunt and an, inst an instruction and an astonishment unto the nations that are round about thee. When I shall execute judgment in thee in thy like in thee, in thee, in anger and in fury and in furious rebukes. I, the Lord Yahabashim Yahshua, have spoken of it. Okay, so the Lord Yahabashim Yahshua, he's about to execute judgment. Judgment is about to go forth, man. Okay, upon these heathen nations, these Edomites, and including two thirds of our people, man. You Israelites. Okay, verse uh, 16. When I shall send upon them the evil arrows of famine, which shall be for their destruction, and which I will descend to destroy you, and I will increase the famine upon you, and will break your staff of bread. All right, you see, the famine is coming upon this land, Babylon, the great America. The Lord is breaking the staff of bread in this place, man. Okay. Verse 17. So will I send upon you famine and evil beasts, and they shall be reaped thee, and pestilence and blood shall pass through thee, and I will bring the sword upon thee. I, the Lord, Yahweh, Shai, has spoken it. So the Lord, Yahweh, Shai, is doing this. Okay. All right. So it's time for you Israelites to repent, man. You so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, because shit is about to get tough out here. Okay? All right? All right. Let's see. Yeah, right here. This is Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 12. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm going to read this. Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 12. When they fast, I will not hear their cries, all right? The Lord is not going to hear cries of two-thirds of you Israelites, man. And when they offer burnt offerings and oblations, I will not accept them, but I will consume them by the sword and by the famine and by the pestilence, all right? The Lord, how about Shem is about to turn his back on two-thirds of you Israelites, man. He already have because you were too, hey, because two-thirds of you Israelites, you refuse to repent and get right, okay? All right? And hey, and when all hell breaks loose and when shit hits the fan, and when this word is gone, hey, you, hey, two thirds of years might go be looking for the prophets, man, that was prophesying, okay? But you're not going to find us, okay? Because hey, you ain't going to find us, man, because hey, this word is about to be gone real soon, man. So hey, you Israelites, you better repent before it is too late, okay? This is Jeremiah chapter 16 and verse. Yeah, I'll get straight to the point. Jeremiah chapter 16, verse 4. They shall die of grievous deaths. Grievous death. Judgment is about to come, man. They shall not be lamented, neither shall they be buried, but they shall be as dung upon the face of the earth. They shall be consumed by the sword and by famine, and their carcasses shall be meat for the fowls of heaven and for the beasts of the earth. All right, 
two-thirds of you are about to receive the most horrific judgment known to man. All right, Lord, when we, hey, that us, the hopeful net, we escape those judgments, okay? Because, hey, it's going to get so bad out here that Michael, all of the archangels is going to have to step in for the elect, man. The whole elect, Lord, when we're a part of that number. But for two-thirds of the Israelites, man, grievous death is coming to two-thirds of the Israelites, man, because you refuse to repent, okay? All right, you refuse to get right. Let's read this scripture again, man, okay? Jeremiah chapter 16 and verse 4, again. They shall die a grievous death. They shall not be lamented. Neither shall they be buried, but they shall be as dung upon the face of the earth. And they shall be consumed by the sword and by famine, and their carcasses shall be meat for the fowls of heaven and for the beasts of the earth, man. Right? <laughs> Even these animals, these dogs are going to be, hey, tearing at your dead carcasses, man. Okay? All right? Let's see. Let's go here. I'm going to start at verse 12. This is uh, Isaiah 65, and I'm going to start at verse 12. Okay? Isaiah 65 and verse 12. Therefore will I number you to the sword, and ye shall all bow down to the slaughter, because when I called, ye did not answer. When I spake, ye did not hear, but did evil before my eyes, and did choose that wherein I delighted not. That's two thirds of years from life. We refuse to repent. Okay? Verse 13. Therefore thus said the Lord, Yahweh shall have shall power. Behold, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. The Lord's servants are going to eat in that day. But two-thirds of you are about to starve. Behold, my servants shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. All right? You already see the water, all right? Three states, all right, where the water contamination, Mississippi, Baltimore, Maryland, and in New York, where the water is contaminated and it's unable to, and it's not safe to drink. That's going to spread throughout Babylon, man. Okay? It's going to spread all throughout Babylon the Great, man. Well, you people are not going to have no drinking water, okay? A lot of you going <laughs> to die of thirst. A lot of you going to die from hunger, man. Lord, we're going to glory how about you I protect us from those things, man. All right? The evils that are coming, okay? All right? That we're counted worthy to be saved out of that. Like it says, he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved, okay? All right? Behold, my servants shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold... My servants shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. Behold, my servants shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart, and shall howl for vexation of spirit. Okay? So, hey, a lot of evils are being multiplied upon this earth, man. Okay? It's time for you Israelites to repent. Okay? Before the great day of the glory, how about Shem Yashai, which is near. Okay? And like it says in Romans 13 and 11, it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. Okay? This is Second Israel chapter 15 and verse 5. Behold, said the Lord, Habashin Yahushai, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. Why, Lord? Verse 6. For wickedness have exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and their hurtful works are fulfilled. Verse 7. Therefore, said the Lord, Habashin Yahushai, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness, which they profanely commit. Neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. Behold, the innocent and righteous blood crieth unto me, and the souls of the just complain continually. All right, who's doing that? The Lord. The Lord's men, the men of the Lord, man. The prophets. Sighing and crying for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Okay? All right? Uh, let's see. Let's go down. Let's get down to verse 18. 2 Israel chapter 15, verse 18. For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. Verse 19. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy the houses with the sword and spoil the goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. All right? So, hey, like we say, your groceries, your uh, houses, you people that got all this food stored up, yeah. Hey, you're about to be visited real soon, man. Okay? Let's go here. Second Israel chapter 2 and verse 27. Be not weary, for when the day of trouble and heaviness cometh, others shall weep and be sorrowful, but thou shalt be merry and have an abundance. All right, we read that in Isaiah the 65th chapter. 
like the Lord said, his servants are going to eat in that day, okay, all right, the Lord is going to make a way for his elect to eat, okay, all right, last scripture, Sirach Ecclesiastes chapter 40 and verse 8, such things happen unto all flesh, both man and beast, and that is sevenfold more upon sinners, death and bloodshed, strife, sword, calamity, famine, tribulation, and the scourges. These things are created for the wicked. All right. Spirits created for vengeance, man. Okay. And these spirits of vengeance, these death angels are about to get busy out here. Okay. And there, and for their sake came the flood. Okay. All right. Let's get one more. All right. Second is chapter 15, verse 49. And this is what's coming. Second is chapter 15, verse 49. I will send plagues upon thee. Widowhood, widowhood, poverty, famine, sword, and pestilence to waste our houses with destruction and death. This is what's coming. And like I say, man, shit is about to get crazy out here. And as a matter of fact, let me get one more. I said that was going to be the last one. I got to get one more, man. Daniels 12 and 1. All right. And at that time shall Michael stand up. The great prince was standing for the children of thy people. And there should be a time of trouble, Jacob's trouble, Jeremiah 37, such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. It's going to be like no other, man, okay? It's going to, hey, this time is going to be worse than 70 AD and any other times, man, all right? It's going to get crazy out here real soon, okay? All right? And at that time, thy people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book, all right? The book of life, man, the elect, okay? Only the elect are going to be able to escape these times that we're heading into, man. All right? But two-thirds of our people, the Israelites who still go Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, are not going to escape, man. Okay? But, hey, the time is now is to repent. Okay? Now it's time to repent, man, before it is too late. Okay? All right? So Rock 5 and 7 says, Make no tear in the turn to the Lord, and how about Shem Shai, putting out all from day to day. All right? You know what, as a matter of fact, I got to get it. <laughs> I'm going to end it with that one. That's one of my favorite scriptures to go to, man. All right. Sirocco Ecclesiastes chapter uh, 5 verse 7. Make no tearing to turn to the Lord and Yahweh Shem Yashai, putting out all from day to day. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord and Yahweh Shem Yashai come forth, and in thy security thou shalt be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance. All right. You people think that you're in good shape, think that you're in good case. All right, you got enough food, man, Psh, man, please. And especially if you got a lot of food stocked up, man, you're about to be visiting, okay? All right, so with that, I'm going to end the lesson here, man. All right, and I'll put that article in the description box. All right, it's time for Israelites to repent because things are moving fast, man. The days are being shortened for the elect, say, Matthew chapter 24, verse 22 says, And it said, those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect, say, those days should be shortened. The days are being shortened. Things are moving fast, man. These prophecies are jumping off the pages. Repent now before it is too late, okay? So with that, I'm going to end the lesson here. I pray this lesson was edifying. All praises and glorifications goes to Yahweh Bashem Yahshai, Bashem Rakakadash, double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone who will will. Peace, blessings, and salutations goes to the whole from that that scattered abroad. See you with another lesson soon, Lord Willen. Kwam Yon Sharon Shawn Wam Wow Baba Ball about Wam D T A about Baba Ball Boom Shawn Wam till next time Shawn Wam